Hello, uh, this is Mr. Tala. I am here to explain to you today about graphs. Now, a lot of you probably already know about graphs, and that's great. I'm really happy for you. But uh, today you're going to get an in-depth view as to which graph you should use at which time, which is really not something that I think that you've learned at any point. So, um, the first question you need to ask yourself is, do you need a bar or a line graph? Um, it's because those are pretty much the only two kinds of graphs that there are out there. And you may say, what about a pie graph? Well, a pie graph is just sort of a different kind of bar graph. So let's, let's start off. There are three types of bar graphs. There are pie charts, there are bar graphs, and there are a special kind of bar graph called histograms. So let's start with the pie chart. If you're going to use a pie chart, you're going to be counting parts of a whole. So if you have one whole thing of something and you are counting the parts of that whole thing, then each of those parts will fill a certain part of your pie graph. For instance, on the screen right now, you can see a graph of, uh, the, of national spending. And you can see that in the United States, 21% of, of, our, of our government spending goes towards Social Security whereas 9% uh, goes to our, the interest paid on the amount that we owe. And so you can see that as a, as a whole, so we have a whole amount of our government spending, part of it goes to one thing, part of it goes to another. This tells you how much goes to one thing and how much goes to another. So if you were counting parts of a whole, you would use pie chart. Bar charts are used for comparing things. Okay, If you're comparing one thing to another, it's an easy way to see because you can see if it's bigger, it's more, and if it's smaller, it's less. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make these kinds of graphs in Excel because that's something that you're going to be expected to be able to do in my class. And by the way, there are tutorials on how to make these in, on my uh, Blackboard site under suggested homework in the graphing section. And you will be making graphs in Excel uh, during the assessment. So let's start with a pie chart. Here, I have a tabulation of the Electoral College votes population area by state. Now, let's say I want, it has the population, you can see all the population of each state listed right here. And let's say I want to know how many people are in each state, then that would be parts of a whole, right? So I could do this as a bar graph, comparing the numbers of people in each state, but I want to show... Uh, as parts of a whole population by state. And so I'm going to use a pie chart. So what I do is I go to insert chart and ask me what kind of chart I want to insert. I would go to pie and then pick the one that I want. I'm going to go for this 3D action right here. All right, so it's chosen all sorts of different stuff and I don't know what it's doing here. So what I do is I right click on this Okay, and it shows me options. And I go to select data, because it's got way too much data in there. So I'm going to select the data that I want. I only want one set of data. And so you can see it's got all these series of data in here. I don't want all of those. So I'm going to remove all the ones that I don't want. I just want one set. Okay. The name of this chart that I want, I can type it in. What I'm going to type is population by state. Okay. You need to have a title to your graph all the time. The Y values that I want. Okay. So the Y values are going to be uh, the data, the actual numbers that I want to measure. All right. So now I want to select my data. And you can see this little box right here. Here's my Y values. This is, this is how I select my data. Um, and you can see this little box right here. This will let me select the boxes that I want with the data in it. So what I do is I delete that, so then I don't have that in there. And then I select the boxes that I want and just drag down. I select all the data that I want in there. All right. Now I have my data. Now I need labels for my data. So what I do is I click on Category, X-Axis X Labels. Right here, and I select all the labels that I want, just clicking and dragging down. And this will put labels on all of these numbers. And then I push OK, 
And there we go. I have my graph. I just need to make it bigger so then I can fit all the words in it. And look at that. You can see all the colors. And then one of the great things about Excel is that you can, electronically, you can, you can drag over each of these and you can see what you're looking at. So this one right here, the most populated state in the nation is California, where we live with 33,871,648 people. 12% of the United States population lives in California. What's this green one over here, this other big slice? Oh, that's New York on the other coast. And so you can see there's 18,976,457 people there, 7%. You can see on each of these how many people are in each state. And you can see it's very nice and neat. Now this is a lot of things in one bar graph, but I mean, this is just an example, so you may use something else and at another time, but, um, but you, can see, you can get the gist of what's going on here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's go into how to make a bar graph. In this data, I want to compare the party membership of United States Senators. So here you see there are 44 Democrats and 55 Republicans and one Independent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, go to Insert, Chart. I want to make a bar graph, so I click on Bar. I can choose any of these that I want. Things I want just a standard bar graph. So let's just go with this. All right. Now, again, I got to select my data. This is very crucial, selecting your data. So first, I want the name. You always need to name it. So I want it right here. Then, I want my Y values. My y values are going to be down here, 44, 55, and 11. That's the data that I want. And then my x values are going to be my labels, Democrats, Republicans, Independents. And now you see that I now have my bar graph. You can see Republicans, 55, Democrats, 44, Independence one. Now this is obviously not this year because now it's in July 2006 because now uh, Democrats have control of the Senate, but you can see this right here, this data, it's nice and neat. You can see the Republicans have more than Democrats and Independents. So you're comparing things. That's what bar graphs do. Now, let's get out of that. And as far as histograms go, it's a little bit complicated to make them in uh, Excel. I'm not going to go through that in this presentation. Now, a key about histograms, what histograms do is they are counting the number of times something happens. Okay, So in this case right here, you are counting the frequency of trees that are between these heights. So, so you have three trees that are between 60 and 65 feet. You have three trees that are between 65 and 70 feet. So you can see heights of black cherry trees. And you can see the numbers of times that they show up in these heights. Okay, so it's, uh, it's pretty simple. It's mainly used for counting. The y-axis is almost always labeled frequency, whereas the x-axis is the uh, ranges of things that you are trying to count. So, and the bars always touch each other in a histogram. So that's how you know you're looking at a histogram. In fact, if we go back, you can see that this graph right here, in histogram of arrivals, arrivals per minute, in the first minute, we had, or in the first second, in the first 15 seconds, I guess it raises here, it gauges here, there were zero arrivals. In the next 15 seconds, between 15 and 30, there was one arrival. In the next 15 seconds, between 30 and 45, there were two arrivals. And you can see how they span out over time. So that's, so it's basically counting the frequency of, of things. Now on to line graphs. Line graphs have two kinds of graphs that we are going to see. One of the most important ones, and the ones that you will make, most definitely make during the uh, assessment, is a trend line graph. I will, you will need to know how to make a trend line graph in my class. In a trend line graph, the dots are connected. And the dots are connected because the points are dependent upon one another, meaning that the next value depends on the previous value. Okay, so that's a big deal, especially when we talk about the next kind of graph, a scatter plot. Let me show you right, and then 
Um, when you are talking about a line graph, oftentimes you're, you're going to be asked to find the slope. The slope, as you see on the, picture, on the picture right now, is the rise over the run. I'm sure that you have seen this before. I'm sure that you're familiar with this. And so we're going to move on because I want you to be able to see how to calculate slope in Excel. It's really easy. So let's go to back to our Excel, open up my line graph data. And in my line graph data, I have the population, European population, 1989 to 1995. So as in the same, in the same way that we did before, we're going to go insert. I want to calculate the total, I want to show the total European population from 1189 to 1195. So let's go ahead and insert a chart. We're going to get our line graph, which is right here going to get just a standard line graph and now let's go ahead and select some data just as we did before the name is what we want first and my name is going to be European population 1989 to 1995 then we got to choose our y values our y values is our, our, our actual data so those are our numbers down here the total European population then I need labels, and these labels are going to be the dates that these numbers fall upon. And just like that, we have a perfectly made line graph. You can see it right there. European population over time going up. Now, I want to know, on average, how much the population increased per year. Okay. If I want to find out how much the population has increased per year, that would be change in population over change in time. Change in population over change in time, that is rise, the amount that this graph rose, over the amount that this graph ran. And that is rise over run. That is slope. It works. So if I just find the slope of this line, I can find the average population increase over this span of time. So what I want to do here is I want to use a best fit line or something called the trend line. So what I do in order to put in a trend line is I click on the line of my data. I then right click to get my little drop down window, drop down menu. I go down to add trend line. Ta da! I have a trend line. Now, I this just just a trend line doesn't really do me much help. What I need is the equation so I click the checkbox under equation of for format trend line and it shows me exactly what the equation is bam right there there's my equation and from that equation I now have data I have the slope and now we know from our algebra classes that y equals mx plus b and so since we know that now we know that m equals 7 times 10 to the 6 so that means m equals 7 times 10 to the 6th. So that means that the population of Europe between 1989 and 1995 rose at an average of 7 million per year. See how valuable that is? It's fantastic. And you're going to use this all the time in this class. Almost every lab that we do, we will be making graphs. And almost every lab that we do, you will need to find the slope of your trend line. So. That is very, very important. I hope that you paid attention. If you didn't, you can watch it again. So let's go ahead and get out of this and learn about scatter plots. Scatter plots are a very important type of line graph. It shows a correlation between two variables, any two variables. They could be completely unrelated, but it just shows correlation. So. The points are independent of one another. In the graph to the right, you can see, because it's husband's age versus wife's age. You could have done this to anything. It could be husband's age versus wife's age. It could be husband's age versus the state, the state that he lives in. Or husband's age versus uh, the amount of water drank by that person. It, it could be anything. And so you are just comparing one piece of data to another piece of data. Okay. Now, in the graph to the right, one couple does not affect the data of another couple, 
and so you would use a scatter plot line. So in the previous graph, when we showed European population, the European population one year was connected to the European population the next, and the next, and the next, and it either went up or down. In this one, if you were to connect these dots, where, how would you connect them? It doesn't, it wouldn't make sense. And so, um, what you're looking for here is a trend, okay? Now, the thing is, it does not show causation. It only shows a correlation, meaning that one thing correlates to another. In this one, you can see that husband's age and wife's age has a very positive correlation to each other. If the husband is 75, it's not very likely that he's going to be married to a 35-year-old. So you don't see any dots down here. Up here, you see a 75-year-old married to a, I don't know, 58-year-old, but that's fine. It's not, it's not tremendously un, out of the ordinary. Um, see a few outliers, but for the most part, it falls along this trend. Now, in this one right here, you can see GPA versus SAT scores. So GPA over here, just to make it, make it more clear for you, GPA over here, 1.5 to 4.0. SAT scores, 900 to 1300. This was before, this was when it was only up to 1600. And you can see that there isn't a very good correlation between SAT score and GPA. Somebody who has an 1100 in the GPA has everything from a range of 2.8 to 3.6. And somebody who had a 2.0 got a 1,200. And so you can see that there isn't a very good correlation, any very strong correlation between SAT score and GPA. Now, let's see how to make a scatter plot graph. Let's open up some data right here. Right here I have television, physicians, and life expectancy in a bunch of different countries. So here we have all the life expectancies in these countries. Here we have people per TV. Here's people per physician, female life expectancy and male life expectancy. Now what I want to see is I want to see if life expectancy has any correlation between the number of people per physician. Okay? Does having more physicians in a country make your life expectancy higher? Or does having less uh, physicians in a country, so let's say in Ethiopia, you have, 30, you have almost 37,000 people per physician, whereas in... Let's head on down to the United States. We have 404 people per physician. So you can see there's a big difference there. And I want to see if that has any correlation to life expectancy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a scatter plot graph. So I do insert chart. I go to scatter, XY scatter, right over here. I pick one. Now, it's got all sorts of different kinds of data on there. I don't want all sorts of different kinds of data. I want the data that I want. And I only want one series. In this one series, my x values, the ones that I want along the bottom, are going to be, I'm going to make that uh, number of physicians per person. It really doesn't matter which one you choose on this one. But let's go ahead and choose the number of people And then my y values are going to be life expectancy. I think I'm going to change this title just a little bit. And you can change it right on the graph in Excel. It's a nice thing. And it'll be people per physician. So you can see here that as you get, in fact, I can put a trend line in here too. And add a trend line. And you can see, you can also display an equation. And you can see that as you have l more people per physician, life expectancy goes down. So this is the power of a scatter plot graph, is that you can compare one thing to anything else and then see how they correlate. Okay, this one has a negative correlation.
Now this can be used in many different ways, but in this way you can see that as you have more and more people per position, you have longer, you have shorter and shorter lifespans. Now, a few things you need to remember when making your graphs. Tails, dry, mix. Alright, let's see what these mean. T is for title. Always have a title. You need to have a title. If you don't have a title, it's wrong. So, in this one, average scores in biology, I have percent versus quarter. First period, second period, third period are the different bars. Everybody can read this graph, and you know what it's telling you because it has a title. A is for axis. Always, lay, always put your axes in. The bottom axis is called the x-axis. The vertical axis is called the y-axis. I is for interval. You need to have the right interval. If these intervals on this were 100 each, that wouldn't make sense. It would show you nothing. You wouldn't, it, the bars would be so tiny, it wouldn't do anything. And so this was made 60, 65, 70, 75, and these are each, each quarter. So you can see how interval plays a role. L is for label. You need to label your axes. Always label your axes. S is for scale. Again, if each of these gaps in here were 100%, it wouldn't make sense. If each of these gaps were 1s, then you would have a huge graph that you wouldn't need. And so you want to make your interval, you want to make your scale correct. And remember that A was for axis. Now, when you, uh, when you were trying to figure out what goes on which axis, remember, dry means that the dependent or responding variable belongs on the y-axis. The thing that is changing, the thing you are measuring, goes on the y-axis, always. So in this one, I am measuring the percent. That is responding to the change in quarters, okay? That is the thing that I am measuring. Mix means that man the manipulated or independent variable belongs on the x-axis. So this thing is the thing that, is ch that, I, am ch that I am changing. Okay, so quarters change from ta over time, and then I measure over those quarters the percentages of average scores in biology. Okay, we'll talk about this more in class, but for the most part I just want you to see that the y-axis, always what goes on the y-axis is the thing that you're measuring. Okay. So, that is uh, graphing. I hope that you've gotten a little bit from this. I hope that you know how to make Excel spreadsheets. If you do not, please uh, ask me for help on how to make them. So, thank you.